platform party, graduates, staff, and parents. Thank you so much for inviting me to this uh, graduation. I'm delighted to be here. I would like to begin by congratulating the graduating students and their families. A graduation from high school marks an important point in your academic journey. It's a midway point in your continuing journey uh, towards uh, either university specialization and training or a career. So it is indeed a special moment to enjoy. As you set out in the next stage of your academic journey, I thought I should spend the next few minutes uh, speaking with you today about two questions that I'm told might be of interest to you. The first question is, as an international student who's just graduated with an Ontario Secondary School Diploma, what are some of the basic tools required to adapt to learning and teaching in a Canadian university, or in a North American university for that matter? The second question is a related one. As a high school graduate of today, what can you expect in terms of job markets in five years or so when you're ready to graduate from college or university? I feel that I am particularly well positioned to speak on these issues because once upon a time, before I became a professor and vice president at McMaster University, I was like you, an international student in Canada. I came to Canada several years ago for higher education. I loved the country so much, I stayed back. But as an international graduate student, I too had to adapt to a new system of education, make new friends, and learn new ways of studying and problem solving. The fact that you're graduating today shows that you've adapted very well to Canada. What I can tell you is that adapting to university life in Canada or anywhere else in North America will not be much different from your experience here at Columbia International College. You will require the same commitment and perseverance, the reasons why you have succeeded so well today. The one major difference that I can tell you is that universities will not provide information about your grades to your parents. Not even your parents who are paying the fees. Under Canadian privacy laws, university students are considered adults and your academic records will be considered strictly confidential. So dear parents present here today, if you need to know about your kids' progress at university, you'll have to ask them for the password to their university accounts. I say this because I often get requests from parents who say, you know, I really need to know how well he's doing in class, and I have to say, oh, sorry, I can't. I see a lot of kids, students smiling at that. <laughs> I wonder why. Many North American universities have an international outlook aimed at attracting the best students from all around the world. Canadian universities in particular have developed programs and curriculum that transcend national borders and bring a comprehensive approach to education that prepares students to be active and engaged participants in an interconnected world. In many Canadian universities and colleges, you will find adequate support for international students aimed at helping you fit just well into the universities. You will find international student learning centers, uh, learning support centers, and even advanced ESL programs. Many universities also now have study abroad programs aimed at encouraging international students like you. At McMaster University, for instance, our internationalization initiative rests on helping our students develop into being global citizens with a wide range of skills and competencies required in an increasingly interconnected world. We aim to foster in our students a sense of identity and cultural awareness that encourages global thinking when addressing local situations. International students at McMaster will find a community that is diverse, a faculty population that is diverse, and that is particularly welcoming to international students. This brings me to the second question that I want to address. 
As a high school graduate of today, what can you expect in terms of job markets in five years or so when you graduate from university? As a university administrator, this is the kind of question that keeps me up at night. We have to train our students not only for today's jobs, but also for the jobs of the future. One thing we know from research and experience is that the jobs of the future will require skill versatility and flexibility. With scientific innovation and advances in robotics and automation, we know that many of the jobs of today will disappear within the next decade or so, but here is the good news. New ones will be created. Only last week, the online shopping firm Amazon announced that it was opening its first Amazon checkout free stores in Seattle. These fully automated stores have no checkouts. As a customer, you simply walk into the store by authenticating your identity on your phone, grab the items you want, and just go. There are no cashiers, not even a self-checkout machine. By means of a sophisticated algorithm of machine learning and artificial intelligence, the store systems will know exactly what you have picked up and bill you electronically for them. Amazon also announced that the back-end logistics of its stores will be fully automated. So what does this mean? It means that there will be no need to hire inventory clerks or logistics managers. Amazon, as you know, is also experimenting with making deliveries with drones. So there might be no need for truck drivers to. This is an indication of the future of the work environment that you will be going into in five or more years' time. In fact, these changes are already happening. Automation accounts for the bulk of manufacturing job losses in the U.S. and Canada, 88% of it between 2000 and 2010. The jobs of the future would require workers to bring a complex set of skills to the workplace, skills that are not easily replaceable by machine automation and artificial intelligence. Experts believe that any job that has a routine to it can potentially be automated. According to one expert, artificial intelligence is doing to white collar jobs today what robotics has long been doing to blue collar jobs. Imagine what will happen when automation takes over computer programming, accounting, or financial analyst jobs. So what jobs will be left? Jobs that require complex human interaction and initiatives. Many of these jobs will involve what has been described as soft people skills, attributes that enable someone to interact effectively and harmoniously with other people. The jobs of the future will place a premium on communication and interaction skills that enhance human encounters. For an office worker, that could mean being able to communicate across departments. For someone in customer service, it's interaction with other complicated humans. For a care provider, it's empathy to help someone vulnerable and in need. This is why at McMaster University, we are encouraging our students to adopt a broad-minded approach to education. Interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary studies are becoming more and more relevant. We welcome our students to take courses from across faculties and programs to explore combined honors programs and bachelor's programs. We envisage a shift from STEM to STEAM with the addition of the arts to the traditional focus on science, technology, engineering, and math. To give you an example, I teach a course at McMaster titled Global Challenges. That's the title of the course, Global Challenges. In that course, which is taken in our interdisciplinary arts and science program, we study a variety of issues affecting our world today, from the environment and climate change, to epidemics, to global health, 
to terrorism, militancy, and global insecurity. Our arts and science program is a very competitive and highly selective program that admits only about 60 students each year. Many of these students in the program go on to medical school, law school, or other top class graduate programs. But before they go into their specialized disciplines, our goal in this program is to provide them with a well-rounded undergraduate education that prepares them to take on the unique and complex challenges of the 21st century. At McMaster, we offer the traditional disciplines, but in order to prepare our students for the jobs of the future, which I just talked about, we've also developed interdisciplinary programs that cut across traditional disciplines. For example, our students can take bachelor degrees in integrated science, which is a combination of all the sciences, a degree in arts and science, integrated business and humanities, combined honors philosophy and mathematics, engineering and management, business informatics, which combines business studies and computer science. We've also developed interdisciplinary research clusters to address the challenges of the future. We have world-class research institutes in healthy aging, advanced manufacturing, population health, smart and sustainable cities, neurotechnology, and globalization studies. In all these initiatives, we hope to continue our partnership with Columbia International College to offer high school graduates opportunities to explore these innovative programs and career options. So, if as a high school graduate today, you ask me, what should I be doing in university to prepare for these jobs of the future that you talk about? My answer will be a simple one. Expand your horizons. Venture outside your comfort zones. Cultivate a broad sense of curiosity. Be curious about everything around you, not just the things you're already familiar with or the things that you're naturally drawn to. If you're pursuing a degree in life sciences or engineering, take a course in sociology, history, or literature. If you're pursuing a degree in the social sciences or humanities, take a course in evolutionary biology or basic statistics. The jobs of tomorrow will require you to be versatile, and post-secondary education can prepare you for these jobs. And be generally open to new ideas. Find and make friends outside your familiar circles. Try a new spot or hobby. Broaden your horizons. Embrace the future. In some ways, we're going back to the way things used to be. In ancient times, the Greeks and Romans celebrated the Renaissance man. A Renaissance man or woman was a polymath whose expertise spanned a significant number of different subject areas. Such a person could draw on a complex body of knowledge to solve specific problems and challenges. The quintessential Renaissance man was Leonardo da Vinci, who lived in the 16th century. Now, many of you will remember him as a famous painter, but he was also a scientist, engineer, philosopher, anatomist, musician, and mathematician. Now, that is a tall order. It may not be realistic to aspire to master all these disciplines today. However, for the jobs of the future, we do know that you will have to develop some versatility, not unlike those of the Renaissance men and women of the past. Finally, I would like to congratulate you once again. You have reached an important milestone in your education. I congratulate your parents and family here seated, whose love and commitment have made it possible for you to acquire the world-class high school education that you have received at this institution. I also want to congratulate the staff and management of Columbia International College for their continued commitment to providing world-class education, the best secondary education, to students around the world. 
I know this firsthand because I've had a couple of nephews go through this institution, now in university, and I can attest to the quality of education they received. I thank you, and once again, congratulations.